Okay, if you get this far with the ball bouncing, as we looked at earlier with the squash and stretch, these are some little tricks I like to do if I'm not working pose to pose. Look at this. I've did my timeline out to, and this comes in handy, especially if you're doing a walk cycle too. I think you've got your cycle here, but it ends at frame 24 and then everything kind of stops there. So I want to kind of, you know, you could start doing your pose to pose, which we'll do in the next one. But right now I'm just going to show you how to kind of go ahead and make this loop, loop cycle. And there's some fun ways you can kind of like, kind of animate it along a path. It's a little tricky, but um, little tricks here. So in this graph editor, to dock it. If I do dock it anywhere, I'd like to dock it down here, but I'm not going to do that right now. You have these curves. Post infinity. Let's go cycle. Let's see what happens. Booge, booge. Now you can cycle with offset, which means it will continue any kind of like offset turning, like say if it's rotating around the, the world. But right now, basically what that does is that sends those keyframe sets basically into a cycle. It's just going to kind of infinite, infinite loop. So you may think, okay, well now I can kind of start moving this thing along and keyframing the actual movement. Well, it's a little tricky. The best thing to do is to like, let's see if we can do this. And this is stuff I experiment too with sometimes. So let's, we've got the curve here. And if you've looked at the animating the camera um, on the motion path, you can actually constrain this to the actual motion path, maybe make it go around 120 times, and then we'll loop back around. So let's try to motion paths constrain this to the actual um, circle. So I'm selecting my geometry, selecting my thing there. That's the motion path. Oh, error, always. Now, you're going to see this because it's kind of a little trick I found. What it does, it's got like the animation to it. It's not going to be able to constrain itself. So what I found like a trick to do this is actually group group the, anim, group the um, object or actually add a controller to it and parent the controller to the actual um, circle, but it's just as easy really to group this. So if I just go shift G, I'm sorry, control G, now I've actually made a group of this. So then I will actually um, constrain the group to the actual motion path, not the actual piece of geometry. So let's see if this works. There we go. Boing, boing, boing. And now you can start kind of actually tweaking a little bit. It obviously looks like it's not, you know, there's no rotation on it, stuff like that. So this is why this is kind of me work for some. Plus it stopped right there. And you remember on the, the camera, the animation tutorial, you can go in your animation graph editor. You can change this to linear. Start making it look. Still tweaked a little bit. So this is a method you can kind of mess around with, and now you can kind of start messing with the motion path a little bit. You want to go in the group here. Adjusting basically the timing of it. I've made this work for like cars and stuff like that. If there's any kind of animation going on, then you can attach it to the motion path, but it is kind of a fun little thing to mess around with. So taking it back,
So let me just start over on a new tutorial, particularly on kind of moving it forward and kind of up, kind of pose to pose, because I need to bring an image in. But yeah, so this is kind of a little trick I have found that may work using the cycle offset and the cycle in the in the curves. If you've Googled any kind of walk cycle, creating a walk cycle in Maya, uh, you'll probably see someone do this. So it's something good to keep an eye on there or kind of understand these pre-infinity and these post-infinities uh, curves within the, the animation graph editor. The only thing is you can't constrain the actual piece of geometry to the actual path. Let me try real quick backing it up and just doing a curve path for it in this one. Control G, grouped it out, grouped to this. Oh yeah. Boing. So see the way it's trying to find it's skipping a little bit. It's trying to catch up with the time slider. Which in terms of that, you can actually kind of like keyframe it out a little bit more, like maybe 500 frames and then make your... Let's go 500. So control G. The curve. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. So it's just a matter of basically tweaking your path to your time loop especially whatever kind of animation is going on. Then you could actually start this over. But it's a fun little trick method. So, Okay, um, yeah, we'll continue in the next one, but thanks for watching.